Hi, this presentation will cover the de Castle-Gel algorithm for evaluating degree three Bezier curves. This is a particularly simple method to use both by hand and for computers. It's also computationally quite robust, so you don't have to worry as much with this method as other methods that you might try out for evaluating uh, be Bezier curves about round, round off errors and stability and so on. So I'll, let me just uh, launch into the description of the algorithm. Uh, we've got four control points for degree three curve, P0, P1, P2, and P3. So this is for degree three curves. Four control points. The control polygon is the straight lines joining these points in order. So the straight line segments from P0 to P1, P1 to P2, and P2 to P3. And we want to evaluate the degree three Bezier curve defined by these four points, Q of U, as follows. So we're going to iteratively doing LERPs. So we're going to LERP repeatedly. And we're going to start off with forming R0 is you lerp from P0 to P1 by fraction U. So there's some distance U here. I'm drawing the picture as if U was about equal to one third. We're going fraction U of the way from P0 to P1, and that's R0. And then we lerp from also from P1 to P2, again by fraction U. So now we're going fraction U of the way from P1 to P2, and that is R1. And now R2 is the same thing, going from P2 to P3, fraction U. We're lerping from P2 to P3 by U. And there it is, R2. So that's the first stage. And now we're going to join these by straight line segments and re-lerp again. Maybe I'll change color here for a moment. So here's the straight line segment from R1 to R2, and the straight line segment from, well, from R0 to R1, and then from R1 to R2. So now we're going to form S0 by lerping from R0 to R1 by fraction U, and S1 by lerping from R1 to R2 by fraction U. So S0 will sit about here. S1 will sit about here. Again, we've just lurked from between the RIs. And finally, we're going to form the straight line segment between S0 and S1. And we're going to lerp along it. And I'll call that T0. And that's lerping from S0 to S1, again by fraction U. So T0 in our picture sits right about there. So I've just done, done repeated lerping. We've arrived at T0. So the theorem is that Q of U is equal to T0. So this gives a very easy way to compute a point on the Bezier curve Q. We take a value U. For that value of U, we calculate the values R0 through T0. And then T0 is of Q of U. And all we had to do was take uh, LERPs, weighted averages between two points at each at each step to do the computation. So this, I can call that part A of the theorem. Part B of the theorem is that the derivative of Q at U is three times S1 minus S0. So this tells us in particular that the curve is tangent to 
the red line here at T0 to the line joining S0 and T0. So if I try to draw the curve Q of U, we know it starts off tangent here to the control polygon on the line segment joining P0 and P1. We know it ends up tangent here on the control polygon, on the edge of the control polygon joining P2 and P3. Theorem, part B of the theorem tells us it's also tangent here at T0 with line segment joining S0 and S1. So this means we can then, with that information, we can pretty rapidly fill in a pretty accurate freehand sketch of the curve. So this orange part here is Q of U, or now for all values of U between zero of one. This in particular is our Q of U for this particular value. Okay. So the whole curve is the whole orange thing. The for particular value of U, we find it in this way. All right, I'll do an example in the next board. For the example, I'm going to use the same example that was used in the second part of the previous video on particle motion. For this, we had uh, control points for particle motion on the xy plane. We started with P0 was 0, 0. P1 was 3, 0. P2 was 1, 2, and P3 is 4, 2. I can draw the control polygon for this. Like this. And now I can do some computation. So now we're going to evaluate the curve with u equals 1 half. So we're going to do the following. R0 will be lerp p0, p1, 1 half. So that's right here in the middle. R0 is, in fact, 3 halves 0. R1 be lerp p1 p2 1 half so the, that's the midpoint of the line segment joining p1 and p2 so here's r1 and that is equal to 2 1 and r1 or this should have been r1 r2 will be the midpoint of the line segment from P2 to P3. So that's equal to 5 halves 2. We've got a lot of symmetry going on in here, so things are going to turn into straight lines going forward. We now draw the straight line segment connecting R0 and R1 and the straight line segment joining R1 and R2. And we're going to set S0 to be the midpoint of R0 and R1, namely lerp R1, R0, R, lerp R0, R1, 1 half. And S1 is lerp R1, R2, 1 half. So S0 sits here, midway between R0 and R1, and it's equal to 7 fourths, 1 half. And S1 sits here, midway between R1 and R2, and it's equal to 9 fourths, 3 halves. And finally, T0 is the midpoint between S0 and S1. Lerp S0, S1, 1 half. And so T0 actually turns out to be 
the same thing as R1, it's equal to 2, 1. So Q of 1 half equals 2, 1. If we were going to draw this whole curve Q, we know that Q starts off tangent to the x-axis because the first edge of the control polygon is along the x-axis. It ends up tangent to the line y equals 2 for the same reason. In the middle, it's got slope that's tangent to this line here between S0 and S1. So the curve looks something like this. So the slope of Q at U equals 1 half is in fact 2 because the slope of the line joining S0 and S1 is 2. So that's our example. I'd like to end up with a sketch of the proof of part A of the theorem from the earlier board. So let's recall theorem A, which was that Q of U equals T0, where T0 was defined over, as in over there. So let's just write out the proof here. So first of all, we know that R0 is lerp P0 P1U, so that's 1 minus U times P0 plus U times P1. Likewise, R1 is equal to 1 minus U times P1 plus U times P2, and R2 is equal to 1 minus U times P2 plus U times P3. So that gives us the formulas for the R's. Now for the S's, S0 is 1 minus U times R0 plus U times R1. And when you expand this out, you've got 1 minus U times R0 plus U times R1. And when you expand this out and group coefficients, we get 1 minus u squared times p0 plus 2 u times 1 minus u times p1 plus u squared times p2. You might want to pause the video and check this, but notice, for instance, that we've got 1 minus u times r0 gives us the 1 minus u squared times p0, and the 1 minus u times r0 also gives us a 1 minus u times u times p1. So that's one of the factors, u times 1 minus u here. The second one comes from the u times r1, which includes a 1 minus u times p1, and so forth. So that's the formula for S0. S1 is similar. It's 1 minus u times r1 plus u times r2, and that works out to be 1 minus u squared. times P1 plus 2U times 1 minus U times P2 plus U squared times P3. Finally, T0 is 1 minus U times S0 plus U times S1. And combining this all together, it's 1 minus U cubed P0 plus 3U times 1 minus U squared times P1 plus 3u squared times 1 minus u times p2 plus u cubed times p3. And this was the formula for q of u. The formula that we gave back in the previous video. So that proves part A of the theorem. Part B of the theorem, I'm not going to give you a proof, but there, there is, uh, it's straightforward to compute it, though. 
And that's the end of this presentation. Thank you very much.